G'day guys, welcome back to True Eagle. Today I wanted to take a look at what our best 22 is going to look like as it currently stands with the players that we have available and also, you know, our second best 22 so we can get a feel for what kind of depth we have, what kind of list gaps we have. We have done this somewhat in the past, but now we have a little bit more clarity as we get closer to the trade period. Although nobody's been delisted formally yet, other than Andrew Gaff retiring, we do have a pretty good indication of players that may not be around next year. Um, and in particular as well, a couple of trades that seem likely to happen um, in Tom Barras. And as I'm recording this as well, Jack Darling has done a medical uh, with North Melbourne. So that seems to be gathering some momentum as to being true. So today's video is going to be about, first of all, mapping out what I think is our best 22 at this current point in time, as well as what our best 22 waffle team looks like, although we won't have enough players to field a team. And that also gives us a look at what kind of list gaps we have. Um, we've got plenty, but you can sort of see real trends in areas of the team where we're lacking depth for sure. So what I'm gonna do is go through the, both uh, our first 22 and our second 22 as well. So let's crack into the first team. So I'm gonna just put up the, the whole team here in a little graphic. We start with the back line. So I have removed Tom Barris from this because I do think it's pretty certain that he's going to be joining Hawthorne um, in a few weeks' time. So I think for the purposes of this, we might as well take him out. Jack Darling is someone I probably wouldn't be putting in my best 22 if I was honestly picking a best 22 right now, regardless. However, I have slapped him into the second best 22 just because we're not sure about him leaving yet, uh, although it does seem to be somewhat legitimate. So if we look at our tall defensive situation there, McGovern obviously picks himself. Harry Edwards has probably rightfully earned that spot as the next best key defender in this team. Now you can make your own assessment as to, is that something that gives you confidence? Well, I have some faith, although he is still relatively unproven, probably played less than 40 AFL games and very injury prone. Nonetheless, I think he's clearly in that team. And Rhett Bazo, Rhett Bazo takes a third tall spot because as you'll see uh, when we get to the second 22 here, we really don't have too many alternatives. I'd say his biggest competition for these spots are Callum Jamison, who has almost equally been as injured as Rhett Bazo, and I think Bazo probably has a little bit more AFL applicable talent, and obviously ended the year in the team as well in that last game against Geelong. So picking between those two, I'd say Bazo starts slightly ahead, uh, but past that, you know, maybe Harry Barnett as a ruckman. He's ended the year in the waffle as a key defender, but again, should be nowhere near this team by round one. And then there's probably Josh Rodham or somebody like that. Again, I don't think there's much chance that Josh Rodham's even on the list next year. So I think picking the three tools is fairly simple at this point. Brady Hoff obviously established himself as a gun now, picks himself, and I've got Liam Duggan and Ruben Jinby on the halfback flanks. Liam Duggan and Ruben Jinby to different extents will probably play some mid and wing next year. But primarily, I think these are their best positions. So then you move to the center line there, and I've gone Marrick, Harley Reid, and Jaden Hunt. Again, Hunt can play a little bit of back, as can Ryan Marrick. And to be honest with you, I kind of like the idea of Marrick being played behind center more so than the wing. I feel like the wing almost underutilizes him when you consider just how little ball our wingmen get. Ryan Marrick's the sort of guy that I'd rather play behind the footy who can intercept and use the ball damagingly as a bit of a distributor out of the back half. He can do that on the wing, and in the wing, you know, in theory, he'd have more opportunities to deliver the ball inside 50. I, I get that, and his aerial game allows us to probably, you know, work our way up the field as well. He can provide a real factor in the air, but would I rather see him get 20 possessions as a sort of roaming defender or, you know, 11 touches as a wingman? I, I'm kind of drawn at the moment for where we are currently to see him behind center. However, when you consider that Duggan, Jinby, and Jaden Hunt there can all play back and wing and potentially a little bit of midfield as well, you just leave them as rotating options. So I think those guys make a lot of sense for those different roles. So let's move to the forward line. Now I have taken Jack Darling out of this, which allows us to go with a more traditional three forward setup or three tall setup. So you got Oscar Allen and Jake Waterman. Those guys are going to pick themselves. And I think Jack Williams 100% starts in the team next year, given how well he ended last year. And the growth of development he's shown and ability to improve his effectiveness in the ruck makes him a no-brainer for this team. So I've got him in there. It is possible that, I mean, we don't even have a coach yet, but it is possible that, you know, if we thought we could roll with Jack Darling and these three guys last year or 2024, it is possible that they say, okay, Marek can probably slip back into that forward line. It's probably not my preference at this current point in time, but it is an option there. You could put Marek 
in this forward line. But then you've also got some other names to give games to. So Liam Ryan at this point, um, I think is clearly best 22 still. Jamie Cripps, I'm less certain about, to be honest. I did consider putting him out of the team uh, because I was just a little bit unhappy with the way he finished the season. Either way, it's probably going to be his last year, almost certainly. So tentatively, Jamie Cripps takes this spot in the forward line. I did consider Petricelli here. Petricelli is a guy that seems to get picked constantly whenever he's fit. He played one game returning off injury in the waffle, I think. I think he just played one waffle game in 2024. So I went with Cripps to start that round one, but I do foresee over the course of the season, Cripps you know, being rested or phased out of this team. Tyrell Dewar also needs to stay in this team. I think he's one of the more talented youngsters that we have on this list, and there's heaps of upside. Now, it's probably more as a forward who can play a little bit of wing, so I've parked him as a, as a forward pocket in this particular team, but he can, of course, play a little bit higher up the field, deliver the ball inside 50. Uh, I think he's got tons of talent and 100% a sort of guy we need to play in this team. I think he's ready for more AFL time. The reason Cripps probably makes his way into the six as well is probably the defensive running and, and pressure aspect of his game, which I don't think was the most consistent towards the end of the season, but either way, he adds something that, you know, if you just went with Liam Ryan, Tyrell Dewar, a few tools and whoever else, I think we give something up in that respect. As for the Rucks, look, you got Bailey Williams versus Matt Flynn. Just pick one of them. I think Bailey Williams slightly has the points at this point, but I think it's probably like 51-49 a split at this point. I think Matthew Flynn needs to have a big year to work his way into this team. And Bailey Williams, I'll back in to have an improved year on 2024. I think he took a backward step, but probably still slightly the best ruck option we have. And I don't want to play both of them. It is entirely conceivable that we do play Bailey Williams as a fourth tall forward and work Matt Flynn into this team. But that's not the way I would do it. Yo and Kelly, of course, you know, both of these guys are going to be 30 plus. I think Yo turns 31 in October of 2024. So he'll start the year as 31 and Tim Kelly will be 30. So these guys are our veteran mids who will start the year in the team. Again, I don't think Kelly had the, the most consistent year. I think his radar was off, but there is a serious lack of midfield depth, and I don't think he'll start the, this season in the waffle by any stretch. Now, hopefully, hopefully we're in a position where, you know, Elijah Hewitt's having a great year, and we unearth some other midfielder from the draft, and we can probably put a little pressure on Tim Kelly. I'll back him in, though. I think 2023, he was outstanding. 2024, Less so, but either way, too, not too much debate in my opinion as to whether he starts round one. And then for the bench options, so I like to go a backup forward, a backup defender, and two midfielders. So Jack Hutchinson, I'm going to pick as a midfielder for now. Obviously, he hasn't had any preseason at AFL level yet, so there's some upside there for the 22-year-old and ended the year playing a lot of stoppages in that last game against Geelong and what he wins, six clearances, 24 disposals. Is there a chance that he comes in and after a preseason can actually play as a fourth or fifth string midfielder. From limited data, I'm willing to give that a crack at the moment. And there's another guy that I considered putting in his stead, but for now, I think Jack Hutchinson will start the year in the team next season. His role is a little bit harder to foresee. Harvey Johnston as well, I think has taken strides in this team. His ball use, his skills, his cleanliness, obviously can still improve, but he's played less than 10 games. And similar, similar to Dua, I think has that AFL level talent. One of those guys, where we give games to, so he will improve before too long. And a skinny kid, only just turned 19. After a preseason, he could be a lot more AFL ready. Tom Cole is the next best defender to make this team. As you will see when we look at the second best 22, he does not have a lot of competition at all. So I think a clear choice for this team. And then Noah Long, who you know didn't start 2024 in the strongest form, still getting low possession counts, but still very classy when he gets the ball, does something well with it. I'd imagine you know if he gets through preseason, coming off that PCL injury, if he has a good preseason, he will start in the team as that seventh forward. So let's move to our backup 22, and this is interesting as well for looking at the depth. So everyone in red, there is a degree of uncertainty as to whether they will be on the list next year. They're all out of contract with the exception of Jack Darling, who may or may not get traded to North Melbourne. So let's start with our back line. Witherden, Rotham, Jermaine Jones, Jordan Baker, all out of contract as it currently stands. And probably a good chance that all of them are on the list next year. So you go back to that Tom Cole selection. And I think Tom Cole has the potential to be a good best 22 player next year. But there is no competition, really. And that just speaks to this need that we have to recruit some medium-sized defenders, either through the draft or otherwise. So that's why I kind of thought, you know, if Liam Baker is somebody that we recruit, do we play him more as a running defender than say a small forward? I think that's where our needs are. When you map the team out like this, that's the way it looks. And then again, the key back situation of Callum Jamison, 
who's injury prone and shown a little bit, and Harry Barnett, who had a poor year in the waffle and has only played a couple of games as a defender. I'd like to see them experiment with Barnett as a defender more, um, but I think, again, we clearly need to recruit for this position with Tom Barris going out. Bit of a rumor ages ago that we were going to look at Tom Cleary from Port Adelaide. So we could go for like a 30 year old option. I think we would like to draft one anyway, or we could look at a waffle sort of uh, mature age type who I don't have any examples off the top of my head, but someone from a state league, maybe. We'll move to the midfield. You've got Chesser, Hall and Sheed, and then just skipping down there, Flynn, Cully and Hewitt. Now I've got Cully in red because he still hasn't signed, but we did hear that it is likely to get done fairly soon. So Cully, Hall, Hewitt, Chesser, Sheed. I think Sheed definitely starts the year outside the team. He's missed so much football and his form was not really demanding a best 22 spot anyway. Chesser ended the year in the team. I've got him on the wing here. There are, t there are conversations out there online and in my comment section about him playing a little bit more inside mid. I'm all for that, but I just listed him on the wing in this scenario. We also saw him play a little bit of halfback against Geelong. So it's unclear what position he plays at AFL level. You can make the argument he could become that medium-sized running defender. You could say the same thing about Harvey Johnston. But for now, I think, you know, if we are fully fit, 100% fit, which is almost certainly not going to happen, Campbell Chester will start the year in the waffle, in my opinion. And Hewitt. Hewitt there in the last on-ball position there with Jai Cully. I think is tremendously talented. The only reason I don't have him starting round one is purely because he just missed an entire year of football. And I wouldn't be surprised if they take the conservative option and give him a couple of games in the waffle to start the season next year. So it'd be good if he can start you know, in the waffle, get a few 20 plus possession games, build a bit of a tank, and maybe start in the AFL team when he breaks into it, which I have full faith he will, as a bit more of a forward midfield rotation because his tank will will continue to be a problem, I suppose, because, you know, it was a weakness prior to his injury, then he's missed an entire year. But if Hewitt, fingers crossed, has an injury-free run, he will be in the team very soon. So I do think our young midfield is a little bit better than people might think on the surface because so many people have discounted the talent of a larger Hewitt. But I'm not at the point where I'm massively concerned about his future. Hopefully he has a good preseason and breaks into this team. But I would like to see him in the team round one, which would require him to have a good preseason. Fingers crossed still. So then you got the forward line. Um, I've gone Brockman. Honestly, I don't think Brockman's done enough to demand a best 22 spot if we're fully fit. Next year, he's shown flashes, but just that. So I think he well and truly starts in the waffle. Darling there in red. Locke Rawlinson got a one-year extension. That's cool to see. Certainly going to start in the, the year in the waffle, you think. And Petricelli, again, they tend to pick him. But I couldn't pick him in this team. Like, you'd have to pick him over. You could potentially pick him over Jamie Cripps. That would be the one. But I wouldn't pick him over Liam Ryan, Tyrell Dewar, or Noah Long, considering where this list is building and considering that those guys are talented young players. Colin Livingston and Archer Reed as forward rucks with Matthew Flynn in the ruck there. That's partially the reason to get Barnett playing a little bit of key back. I do think there is some potential for that to work. But there's no point playing so many rucks in the same team. So Livingston forward ruck, Archer Reed probably develops more as a stay-at-home actual uh, forward. He's like 203 centimeters, so he can take some ruck taps. But I would I would let him develop, let him cook in the waffle to start the year and hopefully break into the side at some point. Then you've got the bench options there in Bergil, Luke Edwards and Zane True. And of course, all of these are unlikely to play on next year, in my opinion. I think Zane True has the best chance. I have a feeling... West Coast are waiting to see if they can get a Jack Carroll or Devin Robertson or a James Peatling. They, they might miss out on all. And if they do, maybe Zane True does survive. I do think that might have happened last year when we missed out on Devin Robertson. Zane True got a contract extension. He may have a chance to earn another year on the Eagles list. I'm fairly indifferent. You know, I'd be willing to try a Jack Carroll or a Devin Robertson if we made that work. But failing that, if we give Zane True another year, that's fine too. Luke Edwards, unfortunately, with his concussion is uh, likely to, well, potentially going to retire anyway, probably wasn't going to get offered another contract. And Kobe Bergil has some nice AFL talent, good young athletes, but didn't really have a great year and hasn't made much of an impact at AFL level. There has been some hamstring concerns, but I don't think he's made the most of his opportunity. So I think he's less than 50-50 to get a spot next year, unless they rookie list him. Wouldn't be totally against that. Uh, again, we probably need some uh, mid-sized defenders. And you could say the same thing about Jordan Baker. I don't have any strong opinions about him, but he hasn't really gotten close to the team yet. I probably wouldn't be against him getting a, a one-year extension as well. But there you have it, guys. That That is a brief look at you know what our depth looks like, what our best 22 looks like. I think generally speaking, we do need you know more um, you know power runners who can accumulate the footy through the midfield. And then as far as depth goes, 
you know, certainly need to add midfielders, but running defenders, um, a key back, these are probably the most pressing needs for the West Coast Eagles. So let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.